Bye, friend. I'll see you tomorrow. Hey, Jim. Hello, Joanne. Come, let's go. Joanne, have you heard about this Society of Jesus? Hmm. I think I've heard of them. I think they are a society within the Catholic Church. Why did you ask, Jim? Hmm. Nothing. I found their name printed on one of our textbooks. That's why. Let's ask Uncle Francis about it then. Yes. Now how about we find out who reaches home first? Hee <laughs> hee. You know you can't beat me, Jim. I do. Come on. Shows are boring on TV. I know. Ever since Uncle started telling us the story of saints, all other stories sounds boring to me. <laughs> That's true. That must be Uncle Francis. I'll get the door. Good evening, Jim. Good evening, Uncle. Come on, and Uncle. Uncle. I have to ask you something. Go on, Jim. What is a society of Jesus? What do they do? I found their name in one of my textbook. Hmm. The Society of Jesus, more commonly known as the Jesuits, is a society within the Catholic Church. The purpose of Jesuits is to promote Christian faith among people worldwide. Who started this order? The order was started by Saint Ignatius of Loyola, a priest and a theologian. Saint Ignatius of Loyola? Hmm, I've heard about him. Did he start something called spiritual exercises? It's wonderful that you remember this, Joan. Yes, he is remembered as a talented spiritual director. He recorded his method in widely renowned spiritual exercises, a simple set of prayers, meditations, and other mental exercises. Wow! Can you please tell us his story, Uncle? Of course I will. Now listen carefully. Ignatius, whose real name was Inigo Lopez, was born in 1492 in a small village called Loyola, at the southern end of Aspatia. Inigo was the youngest of 13 children. His mother died when he was just seven. And he was then raised by Maria de Garin, who was the wife of a blacksmith. His last name, Loyola, was taken from the village of his birth. Inigo was a member of the local aristocracy and was raised accordingly. He was an ambitious young man who had dreams of becoming a great leader. He was influenced by stories such as The Song of Roland and El Cid. Come on, Inigo. Let's go to the fields. All right. What were you reading? It was a song of Roland. It's about an epic battle that took place years ago. Ha ha ha! Why are you reading those old books? It's such a waste of time. No, my friend. I'm going to be a great soldier. Maybe even a knight one day. Ha ha ha! That's such a stupid idea. Stupid? I don't think so. Come on, friends. It's already late. We have to rush now. Okay, now let's see who can catch up with me. I'm going to beat ya. When he was 16, he started working for Juan Velasquez, the treasurer of the castle. Inigo, hand over this file to the assistant treasurer. Yes, master. Inigo served as a page for the treasurer, and he was frequently at the court around rich people. It was here that he developed a taste for the material things of this world. He used his time and talents for his own glory and not much else. The employment didn't last for a long time though, and eventually, he became a soldier in the Spanish army. 
He had by now changed his name to Ignatius. Whatever happens, do not let them through. Are you ready? Yes, yes. We'll fight till we die. Ignatius had won many battles for the Spanish army, but he got terribly wounded in this fight against the French. Master, Master, are you all right? Ah! Help! Somebody help! Ignatius was injured very badly that day. The cannonball had shattered his leg and the bones were protruding out. But as always, Ignatius was brave. He was strong during the painful journey back home. Ah! Uh, ah! Uh. Ignatius, wake up! Ignatius! Huh? <laughs> there you are! Thank you for saving me, Doctor. Don't thank me yet. There is some good news. And I'm afraid I may have some bad news for you as well. What is it, Doctor? Good news is that your leg has finally started healing. We think you will be able to start walking in a few days' time. Wow! That's wonderful, Doctor! Did you hear that, my friend? And what's the bad news? Uh, one of the bones in your broken leg is sticking out and it has formed an ugly bump just under your knee. Will I be able to walk? Yes, yes. But I'm afraid one of your leg is shorter than the other one. So you will have a slight limp while walking. Oh, no. Don't worry, Ignatius. It's a miracle that you are alive now. You should thank God for that. Don't worry, my friend. You will be all right. And that's it. Thank you for lying still, Ignatius. That's all right. Sister, can you do me a favor? What is it? You must know that it's quite boring to lie down here with nothing else to do. Could you get me some books to read? Mm, let me see what I can do. We don't have a library here, but the head nurse has a habit of reading and she must have something. I'll go and ask her. Thank you, sister. Also, if you don't mind, it would be great if you can get me some books and romances of chivalry. I really enjoy reading those. I don't think the head nurse would be having such type of books. Anyways, let me see. Hello, Ignatius. How are you today? I'm fine, sister. Did you get the books I had asked for? Mm, I'm sorry, Ignatius. The head nurse didn't have the books you had asked for. She only had these with her. I took them anyway as I thought you'll have something to read. That's all right. Thank you so much for the help. The sister gave Ignatius two books. One was about the life of Christ, and the other was a collection of saint stories. The life of Christ? Uh, I'll start with this one. De Vita Christi, or The Life of Christ, was one of the famous books on the teachings of Lord Jesus during those times. This book would inspire Ignatius for years to come. Wow, that was, that was amazing. I should start with the other one too. Ignatius then started reading the other book, which had a collection of saint stories. He was struck by the great sacrifices that the saints made for God. He was overwhelmed by their love of Jesus. am I doing with my life? These people, they did so much good during their time on earth. And me, what have I done so far? As Ignatius continued to heal, he started reading more and more books about the teachings of Jesus. He also started praying seriously. God's peace filled his heart and assured him that he was on the right path.
By the spring of 1522, Ignatius had recovered enough to leave the bed. Hello, brother. Me, sir? I want to give you my clothes, sir. Will you accept them? Of course, sir. May God bless you. Here you go. Now all of my clothes are yours now. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Lord. May God bless you, son. And then he went to the Benedictine Monastery and he laid down his sword and his armor. God, that's all what I have left of my previous life. I will be a new man from now onwards. Thank you for showing me the way. He then walked to a hospital in the town of Manresa. In exchange for a place to live, he performed work around the hospital. In order to live in absolute poverty, he even begged for his food. Ignatius used to spend most of his time in a cave nearby. When he was not working or begging, he would go into a cave and practice spiritual exercises. He used to practice for more than seven hours a day. His time in prayer and contemplation helped him to understand himself better. He also gained a better understanding of God and God's plan for him. The next year, in 1523, he made a pilgrimage to the Holy Land. Ignatius wanted to stay in the Holy Land for the rest of his life, but circumstances forced him to return after a fortnight. Ignatius knew that he had to become a priest, but he didn't have the educational qualification. In those days, Mass was held in Latin, but Ignatius didn't even know a bit of Latin. So for his first Latin lessons, big, rough Ignatius had to sit in a classroom with a bunch of 10-year-old students. Ha! Huh. Good morning, children. What is he doing? Isn't he our new Max teacher? I don't know. Now everybody sit down. Hello, everyone. My name is Ignatius and I'm not your teacher. I'm a student just like all of you. Huh? Student? He must have gone mad. Ha 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 ha. I heard you, boy. Don't worry. Like I said, I'm here to learn Latin, my friends. Wow. Can you be my friend? Of course we can. <laughs> After this initial schooling in Barcelona, he moved to a Spanish university in Alcala and then Salamanca in the north. In both places, along with his studies, he engaged with people in conversation about spiritual matters. Hey, you! Huh? Me? Yes, you. What are you doing there? Uh, I was just talking to these people here. And what are you talking about? Uh. I... I... We were having a discussion about spiritual matters, sir. Why do you ask? Is there a problem? Yes, there is a problem. This man here was arrested twice before for engaging in theological conversations without having a degree. What? You don't have a degree in theology? Is it true? Yes, yes, sir, it's true. I don't have a degree in theology. But... Then how did you speak about the spirituality here? Where did you learn all that from? I learned that myself, sir. Now come with me. You'll be spending tonight in our prison. What a bright man he is. Ignatius was detained three times for interrogation. The charges were always the same that he dared to speak about theological matters when he did not have a degree. He was always found innocent and released the next day. 
Ignatius then left Barcelona and attended the College Saint Barbe of University of Paris. He was 38 then. It was here that he met the two most important people in his life who would help him to build the Order of Jesuits. While at the University of Paris, Ignatius became friends with Peter Faber, a young man from Savoy, south of France. It's amazing that you have the will to learn, even at this age. The words that you speak, they are so inspiring. Hmm, I found my calling pretty late in my life. <laughs> that must be Francis, my roommate. Hello, Francis. Hello, Peter. How are you today? I'm doing fine. I want you to meet my friend Ignatius of Loyola. It's a pleasure to meet you, Francis. Likewise, Ignatius. Peter had been spending much time with Ignatius and he was really inspired by him. He was impressed with the spiritual exercises that Ignatius taught him. I have to tell you something, Francis. What is it, my friend? I have decided to become a priest after my studies. Wow, that's amazing, my friend. I am so happy for you. Ignatius was impressed with Francis, and he tried to convince Francis as well. You should also consider becoming a priest, my friend. From whatever Peter told me about you, you're indeed a spiritual person. <laughs> Thanks for the offer, my friend. But I think I'm going to be a professor. I really like teaching, and it pays me well too. Hmm. You know there's the saying, What shall it profit a man to if he gains the whole world but lose his own soul? Huh? We'll see again, my friend. The question made Francis think for a while. He thought about it for many days. Francis had been living a noble life, so at first, he could not understand the life of Ignatius, who was living in absolute poverty. Francis had learned about Ignatius' spiritual exercises, and he was very inspired. As days passed, Francis became more and more impressed with Ignatius. He had now started attending his classes as well. Ignatius, too, had seen the potential that lay hidden beneath Francis's worldly ambitions. So what do you say, Francis? Are you ready to join the order? Yes. You have completely won me over, my friend. I'm truly impressed with your works. Please allow me to join your order. Come with me, my friend. And this bond went a long way in finding the Society of Jesus. Many others joined the order too. There were these two young students from Spain, Diego Lainez and Alfonso Salmeron, who heard of Ignatius's fame and joined him. Then Nicolas Bobadillo, a successful teacher of philosophy, fell under Ignatius's sways. So did another scholar. Simon Rodriguez. These men were the saints' first disciples. I would gladly give up my life if there was an offer for immediate heaven. You shouldn't think that way, Linus. I would rather choose to stay on earth and work for the glory of God. If God sends you great sufferings, it is a sign that He will make you a great saint. If you wish Him to make you a great saint, then ask Him to send you great sufferings. While he did not place too many burdens on any, he wanted his followers to see God in all they did. He insisted on humility. Humility is the truth. Hate what the world seeks and seek what the world avoids. My dears, 
We need to get the approval of the Pope to start our mission. What shall we call our mission? What do you think of the name Society of Jesus? That sounds excellent. That one is great. Now that we have drawn the rules of our order, I think it is time we get an approval from Pope. Ignatius, Francis, Pierre and other members together founded the order, which went on to be known as the Society of Jesus or more commonly known as the Jesuits. Together, these seven companions were united in spreading the gospel and devoting their life to the service of God. That day, they took the vows of chastity and poverty and then made a pilgrimage to Jerusalem. Under the direction of Ignatius, his disciples were soon ready for work. Francis, I want you to go to India. Go and set all a fire and a light. I will, master. Francis went to India and converted many people to Christianity. He became quite popular among the local people and he traveled far and wide spreading the word of Jesus. Ignatius had sent his other disciple Faber to Germany. The German towns were hotbeds of Lutheranism, but Faber's inspired preaching soon began to make headway with the people. When the Council of Trent was called, Lyonnais and Salmeron were appointed theologians of the Pope. There is little record of miracles performed by St. Ignatius, but the achievements of his disciples are widely known. At the time of his death, there were 1,000 Jesuits, a good number of them involved in 35 schools Ignatius had started. He died on the morning of July 31, 1556, at the age of 64. St. Ignatius was canonized in 1622 by Pope Gregory XV. He was named the patron saint for spiritual exercises and retreats by Pope Pius XI. Wow! The works of the Jesuits are amazing! Yes, Uncle. I really liked it. This is the prayer of St. Ignatius of Loyola. Let's pray this together. Dearest Lord, teach me to be generous. Teach me to serve you as you deserve, to give and not to count the cost, to fight and not to heed the wounds, to labor and not to seek rest, to give of myself and not to ask for reward, except the reward of knowing that I am doing your will.